Bonjour. Hello. Thank you. I'm Al Swigert. It's a great honor to speak here at PyCon with my fellow Python developers, in particular to talk about Python's role in education and the future of Python itself. So I'll begin by talking about PHP. PHP is a popular language for web applications. WordPress is written in PHP. Wikipedia is written in PHP. Uh, Facebook used PHP and then shifted to its own PHP-derived infrastructure. But PHP also has a bit of a reputation. Uh, PHP has this reputation, and I could go into detail about PHP's flaws and warts, but I only have 30 minutes. So I'd like to talk about why PHP is popular. First, it's easy to install and set up. It's free to download. Getting it on your laptop and configured to work with Apache is four or five steps. And I can't stress how important this is for folks who have never programmed. It's important that getting started be easy. The simple stuff should be simple. And it turns out that it's important for seasoned IT experts as well. Because PHP is easy to set up, it's available on many web hosts. So if you have an idea for a web app and you want to prototype it and throw it up on a cheap web host, PHP will almost certainly be an option. And PHP is really easy to get started with. Hello World is one line long. So if you have these three things going for your product or your platform or your programming language, you can get everything else wrong, which PHP does, but you can still be wildly popular and successful. PHP deserves its popularity, unlike JavaScript. Okay, so let me talk, uh, let me talk about a programming language I love. Perhaps you've heard of it. Python gets a lot of things right. Not only is it a language that is used professionally, it's also a great first language for total beginners. It's easy to install, widely supported, it's easy to get started with. And I think that last part, the easy to get started with, is due in large part to IDLE. This is IDLE, and it's the IDE that comes with Python. So installing it is easy, because you don't. Uh, I believe Smalltalk did this, but no other language does this. They might have an interactive shell that you run from the terminal, but no other major language ships with a graphical IDE. There's no setup steps uh, either. You just press F5 to run your program. Now, if you look at the commit history for idle, you'll see a large amount of effort has gone into it. I don't want to discount that. But at the same time, it looks unpolished. It's simple, which is nice, but idle is far from a full-featured IDE or text editor. I can count the number of professional software developers I know who use idle for Python programming on one hand. Actually, I can count them on one finger. It's one person. Now, this actually turns out to be a great thing for Idle. I'll explain why in a bit. But first, I'd like to talk about my favorite subject, uh, which is myself. Uh, hi, I'm Al. I've written a few books on Python programming. About a year ago, I left my job as a software developer to write Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, and it's been published by No Starch Press. Uh, all these books are about Python, and they're all freely available online under a Creative Commons license. And they're all made for beginners with no programming experience. So I have a huge interest in getting people to learn to code. I use Idle in each of these books. Idle is a godsend because it spares me from having to explain installation and configuration and how to use the terminal on three different operating systems. As developers, we're used to setting up IDE, so we might have forgotten just how many pitfalls you can come across in that process. Idle is great, but it can be better. And not everyone needs to become a software engineer, but I think everyone should learn to code. It's like playing a musical instrument or knowing how to ask where the bathroom is in a foreign language. It's one of those things that makes you an interesting, capable person. We're going to need tools to bring us into this everybody-can-code future, and Idle has tremendous potential to help do that. For many beginners, Idle is their first impression of not just Python, but programming in general. So I've outlined a practical plan for reimagining Idle with features to change it from that simple IDE that comes with Python into an incredibly useful educational tool. First, I have to tell you I have a personal obsession with the 1987 movie RoboCop. This is a science fiction movie about a robot who is also a cop, a RoboCop, if you will. And in Isaac Asimov Asimovian fashion, RoboCop is programmed with three laws, so I thought Idle Reimagine should follow this model and have three prime directives as well. First, Idle should be a teaching tool for beginners, not a development tool for developers. And these are two different groups with very different needs. Things developers would like might be complicated for beginners, things beginners would like might be tedious for developers. Whenever we have to make a design trade-off, 
the first prime directive says we should make it for the beginner. Earlier, I said that the fact that professional developers don't use idle is actually great. And it's because we can reimagine large design changes without affecting an existing user base. Second, idle should come with Python and only use the standard library. Uh, idle does this currently, and it's why idle is so valuable, even though it doesn't have sophisticated features. But this prime directive affects what we can do. First, we have to use the TK Inter uh, GUI toolkit, which is not ideal, but it comes with Python. So this in turn means we should use the existing idle code base rather than create an IDE from scratch. Third, idle should be fully functional offline because internet access isn't always readily available, but it should have online features. A lot of modern software development is just Googling stuff. Idle should reflect that. So let me go into some detail about actual features idle could have. First is a single window tabbed interface. Now, this is what idle looks like when you start it up. And then when you uh, write a program, you open up a file editor window. They look nearly identical. I've received more than a few emails from people who have confused the interactive shell with the file editor and vice versa. Uh, and if you work with more than one program at a time, it starts looking like a web browser from 1999. Let's combine this into a single window tap design. The interactive shell is on the bottom with an adjustable drawer. The file editor is on top with each file in a tab. Uh, this is a case where a change that benefits new users is also just a good change to begin with. Uh, if you follow idle bugs on the Python issue tracker, you might know that this and some other features I mentioned in this talk are already on the issue tracker. So parts of my talk will be redundant. Uh, I'll repeat that, parts of my talk will be redundant. So we can make idle more like a modern web browser. Let's also make it like a modern word processor and add autosave. Now this is another issue that's already on the tracker because it's a good idea, but it's especially a good idea for beginners because losing your code is this easy frustration that we can spare new programmers. Next, foreign language support. Now I'm American, which means I assume everybody else in the world is too. It'd be un-American if they weren't. So imagine my surprise when I find out that the rest of the world doesn't speak English. In fact, most people in the world don't speak English. Now, we can't change Python keywords or standard library names, but we can make idle accommodate non-English speakers. Now, this is the popular educational programming tool Scratch. Now, they don't rely on the operating system or browser's language settings because those can be tricky to configure. And if you're an instructor of an entire classroom of computers, you might not even have the user permissions to change the language settings. So Scratch just has the language setting baked right into the main menu. You can click on this and instantly change the user interface's language. Scratch is a brilliantly designed tool. This is something Idle should copy. Uh, and speaking of foreign languages, error messages. Check out this common error message. Syntax error, e all while scanning string literal. That doesn't sound like English. I mean, what does that even mean? E all. It sounds like a really desperate Scrabble play or maybe a type of Armenian clam or some. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. For experienced Pythonistas, it's good to have terse error messages like this. We know, oh, this means that an ending string quote is missing. But beginners don't know that. Now, we can't change the error message because that would be changing Python. But we can have additional explanations. Let's have idle add a plain English explanation after the error message, along with a link that opens the browser and searches for that error message. Now, this as a feature isn't really useful by itself. But what it is useful for is that it shows the user, hey, if you don't understand something, you can just Google it. And then from that, they'll discover there's this website called Stack Overflow, and usually it has the top three Google results for any programming question they have. And they can learn that other people have already solved the problems that they're encountering. Uh, combine this with the foreign language support, and you can have non-English speakers understand Python's English error messages. Let's talk about online features. I have readers who email me problems they have, and I'll ask them to send me their code. And sometimes they do this by taking a screenshot and attaching the image to their email. This isn't really an ideal way to share code with people helping you. And more than once, I've had someone use their phone to take a photo of their screen, and they email me that picture. I mean, points for ingenuity, but that's really less than ideal. 
Uh, these folks don't know about pastebin sites where you can just post your code online as text and then share that URL with anyone who needs to see it. Uh, we could just have an integrated pastebin feature into idle and have idle upload its file or, or maybe just some highlighted code or something to a pastebin site and then return that URL. Now, while we're at, we can also have an integrated pip installer for installing third party modules. Right now, using pip looks like this. Uh, you have to open up a terminal, which is different on Windows, Mac, and Linux. You have to CD to the correct folder, which is different depending on which version of Python you have installed. This is a headache. Instead, we could offer a simple GUI that tracks which packages are installed and lets you install others straight from idle. Uh, next, Python 2 is still widely used, unfortunately. Uh, and there are a lot of com incompatibilities between Python 2 and Python 3. Some of the emails I get from readers are due to the problems they encounter because they ran their Python 3 code with a Python 2 interpreter, or vice versa. Uh, we could have idle do some simple checks and say, hey, uh, it looks like you're trying to run code with the wrong version of Python. And this is a simple way to prevent a very common mistake. Now, all of these features are fairly tame. They seem like you know, good ideas to have for any IDE. But remember Prime Directive 1, idle should be an educational tool. This last feature that I'm going to cover is a bit more controversial. It's a wide departure from idle's current design and purpose. Uh, this is Code Academy. It's one of those teach yourself to code sites. There's quite a few of them, but they all generally look the same. Part of the page has this English description of the current lesson and some programming concepts. And then another part of the page has a file editor where you type your program in. And there'll be some check or verify button that essentially runs a unit test to see if you've completed the program correctly. I propose that Idle have built in a tutorial feature like this. Ned Batchelder has a project called Choosy, which is a tool for writing Python exercises. All of this is doable. PyCharm's Education Edition has a similar feature. We can implement lessons as plugins that you can install using pip so that anyone can write their own tutorials. So not only do you have the built-in tutorials, but you also have a system of plugins where you can install any additional lessons that you find and encourage people to write their own lessons as well. So this turns idle into a tool that not only lets you write Python code, but also learn how to code in Python. So this is how I reimagine idle, but I'm just one person in a community. My imagination is too small for what idle can be. So if you'd like to talk about changing idle, or if you want to talk about the 1987 movie RoboCop, please find me at this conference or contact me online. Here's my email and Twitter handle. All of the uh, design uh, documents that I have for the Idle Reimagined project are on this GitHub wiki. I'm going to plug my book just one last time. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking.